Well, welcome again to another edition of Christian Answers. My name is Jeff Short, and today we're going to be looking at another article on evangelical leader Eugene Peterson. He is the interpreter, he is the translator of the popular message paraphrase Bible, and he has been in the news lately for his interview with Religious News Service where he said that as a pastor, if he were a pastor today, he would indeed perform so-called gay marriages. He backtracked on that as soon as that article came out. He says, no, I believe in the biblical Christian worldview that marriage is between a man and a woman only. So he retracted his initial interview. Now, what has happened since then is he has been hit hard by both sides. The far left, the progressives, the so-called LGBTQ movement, etc., they now see him as a betrayer of their cause. And the evangelical world is now thinking maybe this guy is either a hypocrite, insincere, or he is double-minded, or he's not winning either side. So he's in trouble with both the left and the right. He's in trouble with both liberal and conservatives. He's in trouble with the liberal church now that does promote the LGBTQ cause, and he's in trouble with the conservative church. So he got himself into this problem, and he thought he could get himself out by simply retracting what he said in the interview, but it's not that easy. And so the man who interviewed him for Religious News Service, Jonathan Merritt, put another article out on Eugene Peterson, and he is now saying and claiming that Eugene Peterson is not telling the truth or he's not being sincere or he's being hypocritical in his retraction of what he initially said in the interview. That is that he would indeed, if he were pastoring, would marry a gay, so-called gay couple. And he's saying that that is something that Eugene Peterson has been saying uh, and has been uh, sympathetic to the LGBTQ cause for years now. And he cites some examples of this in a recent article. It's called uh, Eugene Peterson Had This to Say About Same-Sex Issues in 2014. Now, this was an article put out by Jonathan Merritt, July 13th, 2017. So it's after this whole big controversy erupted. He's doing this because he wants to show that what Eugene Peterson said in the initial interview was exactly what Eugene Peterson believed um, for years and years. And so he w wanted to make that clear so that people would think, well, this interviewer somehow cajoled him into saying something he really didn't believe. That's not the case. So let's go through this article, the recent one by Jonathan Merritt, and see what it says. It begins and it says, one of the pastors I spoke about uh, Eugene Peterson to is Fred Harrell, pastor of City Church in San Francisco. He attended a conference in 2014 in which Peterson shares insights that are interesting in light of recent events. Around the, okay, there's a video out put out by Western Seminary, and it was an interview with uh, Eugene Peterson. Around the 223 mark, Peterson talks about being raised in a culture when gay was really bad. He says, I accepted the status quo, but recently, Peterson says, he thought about two homosexual men in his church, one who committed suicide and another who was divorced by his wife. The result, Peterson said, was that I started to change my mind. So here he is, years ago, telling people that he has changed his mind. He started to change his mind about the whole issue of homosexuality. That's a clue. That's a clue in telling you that this latest retraction that he gave because of all the backlash and the, and the pushback among Christians toward what he said, it may be insincere. That retraction may be not true. He may actually, in his heart and in his conversation, actually support 
the so-called same-sex marriage. But he's publicly now saying that he doesn't support it. And if that's the case, he's contradicting himself from years past where he has stated he is changing his mind on the whole gay marriage, gay agenda. And this article by Jonathan Merritt pretty much shows that. Now let's go forward. Around the 231 mark of this video, Peterson is asked about how to pastor families whose children come out as gay. He says, I've helped several families accept their children as gay. And uh, they are devastated at first, and then with just careful, prayerful conversation, they finally accepted that it is not a bad thing, that this can be a good thing, this can be a flourishing thing. So here is Eugene Peterson again saying something like, uh, homosexuality is not a bad thing, it can be a good thing, it can be a flourishing thing. That doesn't line up with his retraction. Uh, his retraction says, I believe the biblical view on marriage, I believe the biblical view, I believe the entire biblical worldview on everything that it speaks about. And here in this interview at Western Seminary, just a few years back, he is saying that he started to change his mind from the traditional view and that he's actually helped counsel families accept their uh, so-called gay children and that that's okay, that can be a good thing that they're gay and on and on. So this again reflects a departure from the biblical Christian worldview on this issue and it contradicts his latest retraction. Let's go on. Around the 236 mark, Peterson says, I've paid attention to the literature that's written on homosexuality by evangelicals, by mainline people. And when people, a lot of pastors have asked me about this, call about it, I copy these things. He references an article in the Christian Century uh, magazine right now, and he calls it brilliant and masterful. So Christian Century is a liberal denominational publication. It has never tried to even in theory, hold to the biblical Christian worldview, it outwardly and proudfully says it's a liberal publication. It doesn't accept scriptures as the word of God, the literal truth, the infallible word of God. It doesn't accept that. And so he's quoting from an article in this liberal publication in support of uh, the LGBTQ movement. And so here again, this contradicts his recent retraction where he got into trouble in the first initial interview for saying yes he would do gay sex uh, gay um, same-sex marriage and now later the day after the publication he retracts he says no that's not true I changed my I changed my mind back to the traditional view well it doesn't ring true that he would change his mind back to the traditional view because he was already questioning the traditional biblical Christian moral value on this issue uh, before this interview even took place. Before this controversy even erupted, he was questioning, doubting, and even showing sympathy for the LGBTQ movement. And so, again, um, are we looking at hypocrisy on his part? Are we looking at actual outright deceit? Is he actually just telling a big lie to try to salvage uh, his many evangelical books and his reputation in the evangelical community? What is he doing? He really needs to explain himself and not just simply say, oh, I've retracted my interview answer from yes to no. Uh, that sounds very hollow. It doesn't sound sincere. And from the looks of these other articles, and uh, evidences it doesn't even look like it's something that's truthful so let's go on with the article by Jonathan Merritt what was the article Peterson lauded and recommended it was titled what is marriage now a Pauline case for same-sex marriage by Gerald Schlabach and this is an article that Peterson says was brilliant he says it's masterful it's an article justifying so-called gay marriage. 
and he's making photocopies of this article and he's distributing these around to young pastors who write to him about this same question. It doesn't sound like he's holding a traditional Christian biblical position on the issue here. And that's, we're talking only a couple years ago. So the interview that he conducted at Western University in front of seminary students seems to indicate that he had already changed his mind on the view of marriage. And so when Jonathan Merritt approached him this, uh, for this interview, this controversial interview, it sounds like Eugene Peterson was simply giving Jonathan Merritt his honest views. He was giving his frank and honest views about marriage now. And those views included uh, his approval of so-called gay marriage. And when he was asked, would you, if you were a pastor today, would you uh, conduct a same-sex marriage? He said yes. One word, yes. And that's what got him into all kinds of trouble. And that's what uh, he had to backtrack from. Uh, the day after the publication came out, he had to backtrack and distance himself from that quote and, and say, I retract that. I pull that back. I take that back. Now, was he really retracting what he believed? Was he pulling back his belief? Was he having a real genuine change of heart, a repentance uh, for something that was wrong that he uh, came to believe over time? Or was he simply retracting something in print? Uh, in other words, was he simply trying to say, oh, I want to erase that. Or if you're on your computer, I want to hit the delete button and reset that statement. I don't want to say that statement publicly. Is that what his retraction is all about? In other words, here is Eugene Peterson. In the years leading up to this controversial interview where he said that as a pastor, if he were a pastor, he would perform same-sex marriages today, where he said yes to that. Um, and, but the evidence now shows that in the years leading up to that controversial interview, he, in fact, had already embraced that whole idea of the LGBTQ movement. He had bought into that whole ideology. He had embraced the whole uh, so-called gay theology that somehow justifies this from the Bible or ignores the Bible or however these people in the gay theology movement try to justify it. He, Peterson had already bought into that. And so then when this interview came along, he was not saying anything inconsistent with what he was already saying years and years ago. What is inconsistent is his retraction. And that leads a lot of people to believe that this retraction is, in fact, uh, insincere. It's not a real a heartfelt retraction. It's not a real repentance. It's not a real, um, I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. I really don't believe what I said initially in the interview. No, it's more or less he's saying, I want to retract this um, from print. I want to uh, expunge the public record and I want to go on public record as being for the biblical Christian uh, message. But it looks to be that he really didn't change his heart. He really didn't change his mind. He just changed his public uh, stance, uh, his public uh, statement, his press release. He just changed that, almost like a politician. Now, we've, we see this uh, constantly in the political world. We saw this with Barack Obama uh, years and years ago when he was interviewed before he ran for president, before he became president. He was asked, uh, what do you think about um, so-called gay marriage? He said, um, I am not in favor of gay marriage. I am in favor of civil partnerships. And then just four years later, after he's elected president, he now says that his view has evolved. So it looks like uh, Eugene Peterson is acting like a politician in this. Um, he's not ready 
to come out publicly and state that he would, in fact, perform uh, so-called same-sex marriage. He's not publicly ready to uh, affirm that because maybe he feels that the population is not ready for that, the evangelical world is not ready to hear that, and that it would hurt his entire uh, legacy, his publishing legacy, his many, many books that he's written, especially the translation of the Bible, a message, the paraphrase that he's put out, very popular in churches today in evangelical circles. Um, so he's saying, I'm not ready to come out publicly and, and say that I would do this, uh, perform same-sex marriage as a pastor. But from all indications from the past record, and Jonathan Merritt in this second article has brought this up, in all indications we now can see that he had already embraced the whole gay theology uh, years before this interview and so what his retraction simply means is he doesn't want to go on public record as saying that and so he wants to erase that and he wants to replace it with no i'm for the biblical view of marriage which is a very very dishonest way of handling this whole situation. If he had come to the position that he now embraces the uh, so-called gay theology, the LGBTQ movement, and all of that, he should just come out and say, that's where I'm at right now, and be willing to take the heat, be willing to to uh, lose uh, all his, uh, his uh, book distribution uh, channels, uh, Lifeway books would drop his books, many other Christian books sellers would drop Eugene Peterson's books because he's not adhering to biblical Christianity and he should be willing to do that. But it looks like he's willing to be dishonest with the public. He's willing to say, I'm for the biblical traditional uh, historic Christian position on marriage, even though the evidence is that he isn't. So what he needs to do is actually sit down for a clarification interview where he needs to explain why he said what he did in the initial interview, why he said that he would perform a gay marriage if he were pastor today. Why, why did he say that? Um, what was he thinking? Um, what was going on in his mind when he heard the question. Certainly he had thought about this before. Certainly he had even answered questions on this topic before. So it's not like, oh, this is a question that totally out of the blue hit me and I had no time to think about it. No, he's had years and years and years to think about this. He has thought about it. He's expressed his views on it. And the evidence is that he has changed his mind from the traditional biblical Christian view on marriage to the new LGBTQ movement's ideology on marriage. He's, he's embraced that. And so um, he needs to explain that that is what happened. Now uh, he needs to now come back and explain why he retracted it. And it's not enough to just say, well... I realize that I'm a big influence in the evangelical world and I don't want to um, disrupt the peace of evangelicalism. I don't want to discourage uh, people from believing the Bible. I don't want to cause a controversy. And so I s retracted or I made a statement to the effect that I do indeed uh, affirm the biblical view of marriage and that I would not indeed marry a so-called gay couple. Um, he needs to explain now what happened in between the initial interview and then his retraction, because his explanation doesn't make sense. He said the question caught him off guard. He said that he didn't want to be a scandal in the evangelical world and that he didn't want to cause anyone to stumble or fall or, or or anything like that and those are pastoral concerns we understand his sensitivity he's a sensitive person he's a pastoral heart 
person. He's a more of a pastoral than a theological uh, thinker. But it raises the question of insincerity. In other words, would you lie to not hurt someone's feeling? Would you be dishonest to the evangelical world to not disrupt it, to not cause scandal, to not um, cause a division, um, to cause Bible booksellers to pull your books, to uh, radio stations to drop uh, advertisements for your books, all this, all this turmoil that would be caused. Uh, would he be willing to lie and be dishonest and say he's really not for that, uh, the whole gay um, Christian theology and the, the so-called same-sex marriage um, in the church and all that? Um, is he trying to save people from pain? Well, he's stirred up a big controversy because now he is causing a double controversy. The initial controversy was that he would depart from the biblical view of marriage. The second controversy is it appears that he's not being sincere in his retraction. In other words, people are going to say to him, Eugene, you retracted what you said in the initial interview, but you don't really believe your retraction. You don't really disavow what you said. You don't disagree with your initial reaction in the initial interview. You don't really uh, haven't had a change of mind in the few days since the publication. You didn't object to the uh, wording of the publication before it went out. You didn't have a change of heart and call back the interviewer and say, you know what, in our interview uh, I said some things and I don't really think I believe that and I, I, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feeling in our culture today. But um, I really don't want to say that. So can we take that question out? He didn't do that. He didn't try to stop the presses before this article, the initial one, came out. He seemed to be content with the interview, seemed to be content with his responses. Um, it was only after he saw the fallout and the problems that he had caused by his statement in the evangelical world that he then wanted to retract it and pull it back and say, no, I didn't, I didn't really mean that, and I, I, this is what I really believe. Um, that really sounds insincere. And, uh, and when you go back to look at the original interview, you realize that no one was twisting his arm, no one was really pressuring him. Here is the initial interview, and here's some of the dialogue that took place in the initial interview, the one that caused all the controversy. It says, you are a Presbyterian, your denomination has really been grappling with some of the hot-button issues we face in culture today. I think particularly of homosexuality and same-sex marriage. Has your view on that changed over the years? What's your position on the morality of same-sex relationship? And Eugene Peterson said very clearly, I haven't had a lot of experience with it, but I have been in churches where, when I was an associate pastor, where there were several women who were lesbians. They didn't make a big deal about it. I'd go and visit them, and it never came up for them. It never came up for them. They just assumed that they were... They just assumed that they were as Christian as anybody else in the church. Okay, so they assumed that they were just as Christian as anybody in the church. Evidently, he visited them, he prayed with them, he treated them as regular members of the church. Did he try to counsel them? Did he try to call them to repent? Did he try to show them from Scripture that that's incompatible, that that's sin, that that's an abomination in the eyes of God? Did he try to do any prophetic ministry to these lesbian women? It seems like he just went along and said, well, that's just the way they are, and after all, it's not that big of a deal. That seems to be his attitude here, and that's the initial interview that he shared that with. It said, he goes further, in my own congregation, when I left, we had a big uh, congregation, uh, about 500 people. I don't think we ever really made a big deal of it. When I left, the minister of music left. 
she'd been there ever since I had been there. There, there we were looking for a new minister of music, one of the young people that had grown up under my pastorship. He was a, a high school teacher and a musician. When he found out there was an opening, he showed up at the church one day and stood up and said, I would like to apply for the job of music here, and I'm gay. We didn't have any gay people in the whole congregation. Well, some of them weren't openly gay, but I was pleased with the congregation. Nobody made any questions about it, and he was a really good musician. So again, we have an instance where G Eugene Peterson uh, doesn't, attempt to try to counsel with this young man. He doesn't try to uh, show him from Scripture what is right. He tries to treat this as if it is no sin, it is no problem, there is no problem. Um, he, he treats this in a very non-biblical way. And uh, this is what we gather uh, that he believes that that the homosexuality is not that big of a deal, um, and that uh, it isn't even worth trying to bring somebody to repentance or change, or or isn't even worth counseling. I, you know, this is not a Christian evangelical Bible believing pastor's response to this. Uh, he goes on. I wouldn't have said that. 20 years ago, but now I know a lot of people who are gay and lesbian, and they seem to have as good a spiritual life as I do. Wow. I think that kind of debate about lesbian and gays might be over. People who disapprove of it, they'll probably just go to another church. So we're in transition, and I think it's a transition for the best and for the good. I don't think it's something that you can parade, but it's not a right or wrong thing as far as, far as I'm concerned. Oh, really? The Bible says it's an issue of right and wrong. The Bible condemns it in no uncertain terms. So here's a pastor who is not holding to the biblical Christian worldview. Now, in his retraction, he states, well, I hold to the biblical Christian worldview. It doesn't seem to be that's the case. So this, this is the initial interview. I won't go into the part that we all know about. It's the, it's the part where he actually says, um, well, let me just read it word for word and then end with that. A follow-up. If you were pastoring today and a gay couple in your church who were Christians of good faith asked you to perform their same-sex wedding ceremony, isn't that something you would do? Is that something you would do? Eugene Peterson. Yes. One word. Yes, I would do. And now he says, no, that's not what I really believe. That's not what I want to say. I retract that and everything. Well, what he needs to do is come out and he needs to explain his retraction, clarify things, and I think that would help a lot of people really believe him in his change of heart. Well, I hope that's been helpful to you, and we'll talk to you another day on Christian Answers. God bless. Amen.